Do you have PCOS? Things I want you to know as a fertility doctor. Hi friends, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor and I talk about PCOS every single day. In fact, so often I'm getting a patient's history and I'm talking through their time trying to get pregnant, their medical history, their period history, and I ask them, have you ever been told you have PCOS or have you ever been diagnosed or heard the word PCOS? Because very often I'm picking up clues that somebody may have PCOS and they've never heard that before. So today I want to break down clues that you might have PCOS, what it is that I want you to know and think about, and why PCOS is important. So if you like learning about your body and your fertility, please subscribe to the channel. This channel exists to help educate you. We are growing strong with fertility fact videos. So these are just very educational short videos so that you can learn more about your body and be a better advocate for yourself. All right, so who's the classic patient with PCOS? Somebody will come and give me a history and very often it goes like this. I was on birth control pills for a really long period of time. Then I stopped the pill to try to get pregnant and my periods were still regular, but now they've become irregular or I'm having difficulty getting pregnant or I can't track my ovulation. And very interestingly, we see this history where your period was more regular right after the pill and then it starts to space out. And that is because of how the oral combined birth control pill changes your hormones. So in general, I like to think about PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's an ovarian dysfunction disorder. This is where there's abnormal communication between the brain and the ovary resulting in failure to ovulate or make the appropriate hormones with the appropriate signals. Officially, to get the criteria of PCOS, you're gonna have two out of three, and these are the Rotterdam criteria. Irregular or absent periods. Absent periods are irregular. Number two, signs of high androgens or male hormones like testosterone, whether that's acne, hair growth, hair loss, or blood values that are higher. Three, a certain ultrasound appearance of your ovaries where you have numerous small follicles. This is considered a string of pearls on ultrasound and you can see in the picture all the little follicles of the black circles on the outside of the ovary. And that is a very classic PCOS appearance, but really you just need a high follicle number. So you have a lot of follicles, androgen signs, and abnormal periods. Well, if you put these all together, what you're really getting is that the ovary is not able to interpret the brain signals right. And then this changes how the brain sends out hormones. And then what happens here are the symptoms that you have. And so there's this misnomer that everybody with PCOS is going to be overweight or look a certain way. And that's just really not the case. Everybody is different and every body responds to different hormones differently. But the overall arching kind of connecting thing is abnormal ovarian hormone production, the end, okay? You do not cause your PCOS. You can't eat your way into a bad PCOS. Now, certain lifestyle behaviors actually can exacerbate or make it worse. And so improving those can sometimes make it better. But there are people with PCOS who can live the healthiest, cleanest life and will not have normal hormones. So I want you to understand that when we talk about trying to optimize things, sometimes it's not curing or reversing and that difference is really important. So what happens in your ovary is I want you to imagine that the hallmark of PCOS is having a lot of eggs. So everybody is born with a high number of eggs in their ovary and they lose eggs over the course of their lifetime until they're out and they're in menopause. I always use this analogy of a little vault inside your ovary and every month a group of eggs comes out. Well, if you can imagine in PCOS, your vault's really full. You're born with more eggs. Cool. Well, in the body, when you have more eggs in your vault, more come out every month. And as you start to run out of eggs, fewer come out. So averages, the average 30 year old is going to have 18 to 20 eggs out of the vault. The average 40 year old, eight to 10, less and less. So when you have PCOS, what is going to happen if we can imagine we have a high egg count, therefore a lot of eggs come out of the vault every month. A couple things happen at one time. In a normal month, the brain is sending out follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. FSH is a well-known hormone that works to stimulate a follicle to grow. And a follicle is a fluid-filled structure 
inside the ovary, but an egg lives inside. So when we do an egg count on ultrasound, we're really just counting your follicles. So FSH is well named. The brain sends out just enough FSH to get one follicle to start growing. And as that follicle grows, it makes more estrogen, telling the brain, hey, we have an egg growing. We don't need as much FSH. And this is how the brain and the ovary have this really cohesive, tight communication system to just get the one egg to grow and to ovulate. And the ovary loves to make hormones. So when it's pumping out estrogen or progesterone in a normal ovulatory cycle, super happy. Okay, well, every tiny little follicle, if we can imagine, makes a tiny bit of estrogen. For the sake of the discussion, let's say every follicle makes one picogram of estrogen. So an average person at baseline is going to have an estrogen of around 20-ish, okay? So this is not negative or zero estrogen. It's just a tiny bit. It's low enough that the brain says, ooh, we need a follicle and sends out that FSH. Well, if you have 40 follicles, now you have 40-ish of estrogen, and that's higher than 20. So the brain thinks that there might be a follicle growing. So it doesn't send out a strong signal of FSH because it already thinks an egg is starting to grow. So you get this process where the brain is being blunted and sending out less FSH, and the ovary has some baseline estrogen, but then the FSH that's coming is also getting diluted against all of these follicles and it is not a strong enough signal to get an egg to ovulate. This essentially can lead to delayed ovulation, no ovulation. Some people will ovulate on time in a random month. So maybe one month you have fewer eggs or a stronger signal and you'll get an ovulation. The next month you won't. Sometimes you'll just get constant breakthrough bleeding where you're just overflow bleeding, but it's not an ovulatory period. It's just essentially that constant estrogen production stimulating that uterine lining but you're never getting progesterone from ovulation, so you don't get a nice period. Because what happens is after you ovulate, that follicle becomes the corpus luteum and makes progesterone. And when you do not get pregnant, that corpus luteum dies after two weeks, you then have a progesterone drop and you bleed. And so often when you have PCOS, if you're not ovulating, you won't have that corpus luteum, you won't have that progesterone drop, and you might not have that period. Now, some people do at irregular intervals, but what can happen is that that estrogen is just stimulating that lining to build up and eventually the uterus can only hold so much and you bleed it out. But you're not really bleeding that bottom layer of cells, so you are at risk for uterine cancer if you do not have regular periods. As the ovary gets bored because it loves to make estrogen and progesterone, and if it's not really pumping those out because you're not ovulating, it starts to make testosterone. And the pathway for the pituitary to send out lots of LH and get that ovary to start making testosterone starts to become very favorable. And this is where we really start to see some of these side effects that we notice. And this can be those androgen signs like acne and hair growth. It can also be insulin resistance, fatigue, difficulty sleeping, difficulty tolerating stress, and also weight gain in a more male distribution pattern, like in your abdomen versus maybe like your butt and your hips. This is all from testosterone. And so it really becomes this multi-hormone imbalance because it's derived from not ovulating, but now you have this testosterone issue. And the problem is made worse if you're overweight. So it's not necessarily that being overweight can cause this, but fat cells make a different type of estrogen. So fat cells make a type of estrogen. And in the same way that estrogen is confusing the signal to the brain. So now if you lose weight, if you are overweight, you will see an estrogen drop and that might help you ovulate. So if you are overweight and you have PCOS, losing weight can help. If you are normal or thin, losing weight is not gonna help. So you don't need to do that. This is why metformin or inositols can be helpful because they combat some of the insulin resistance. So they're trying to back end some of that hormonal issue. And we've also seen metformin decreases testosterone production from the ovary. And this hormonal imbalance from the insulin resistance in the testosterone is why we think women with PCOS have a higher chance of miscarriage. They have a three times higher chance of miscarriage. So reversing that by treating the insulin resistance, and that is with medication and what you eat, fruits, veggies, fiber, limiting sugars and processed foods, getting sleep where your body can heal itself, trying to understand that your body is really sensitive to stressors and being aware of that, but getting exercise, 
going to therapy, going to acupuncture, whatever it takes, those things actually matter a lot in part of this process. So do you have PCOS? If you do not have regular periods, one of the top causes of irregular or absent periods is PCOS. In the REI world, the worse irregular your periods are, meaning the fewer periods you have or even none, the worse your PCOS is. So if you have irregular absent periods, my suspicion is that if you stopped the birth control pill and your periods were okay and then they got worse or started spacing out, the reason why that's a clue is that, well, the pill is giving you estrogen progesterone, but also it causes an increase in something called sex hormone binding globulin. And when you stop the pill, that changes. And now suddenly you have an increase in your testosterone back to your PCOS baseline. It was low while you were on the pill. And now we see the PCOS symptoms kind of flare back up again that weren't shown while you took the pill. The longer you've been off, the more obvious this becomes. Also, if you do have a tendency to have acne, if you have had hair growth, those type of things, or even hair thinning in this area, those things are suggestive of high androgens. But truly, if you have any of those type of PCOS symptoms, you might have it. And I tell everybody, and this is how I'll end, PCOS is like a teeter-totter, meaning there will be moments of your life where you'll have it under good control and moments where you won't. And some of these have nothing to do with you. If your pituitary gland is extremely sensitive to the hormones because it's really trying to interpret these minute estrogen changes, it's going to be sensitive to other hormones too. And things like cortisol and stress, you are going to have a delicate response to. So do not beat yourself up if you do everything right and you're not naturally able to have a period. All right, I'm going to do a video soon about what can you do lifestyle-wise if you have PCOS to try to make this process the best that you can? But step number one is realizing that you might have something, talking to a doctor, getting checked for it. And then if you do have PCOS and you know it and you want to get pregnant, trying to manage that insulin resistance is going to be key. And then seeking early help to ovulate is not a failure. And that is why we are here. Hope this video helped. As always, you can learn more on the As Woman podcast, and you can also follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.